for news that works for your health this morning, and this is a big heads up. Uh, GLP-1 weight loss drugs like Ozempic, Wadgovi, and Zepound, well, they produce significantly less weight loss than the clinical trials that made them famous. Very interesting. Now, this study is from the Journal of Obesity. It shows the average patient lost just 8.7% of their body weight after a year that's far below the 15 to 21 percent weight loss reported in the initial clinical trials. Now, the study also tracked nearly 8,000 patients by the Cleveland Clinic for severe obesity. It showed that overall, patients had better odds of losing 10 percent of their body weight after a year staying on the medication. However, that 10 percent, it is still below the percentages that were shown in, again, the initial clinical trials. As a follow-up study, we know it is in the works to better understand why patients stop taking those GLP-1 drugs. Let's get some more information on this very interesting findings. We want to bring in Dr. Sue Dicostis, and she is a New York City weight loss doctor. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. So why this difference between actual weight loss and weight loss in the clinical trials? This is such a great question, and I see this every day in my New York City weight loss practice. Patients, a lot of patients are DIYers, right? They're getting the drug from an online platform, or they may be seeing a physician who's not a medical weight loss specialist. So that really means they're not getting the best care. They might be self-dosing. And what, what happens is that if you're on these weight loss drugs, I'm talking Munjaro, which is terzepatide, Ozempic, semaglutide, Wagovi, if you're not losing fat, you're not winning the war. The goal is not just weight loss, it's fat loss. And the physician or the patient is not going to know if that's happening unless the patient is being followed with the body composition scale. So that's why I really think if you're going to spend the money, you really want to get healthy and lose weight, see a medical weight loss specialist. I think that's very important. So what happens is that if you're not losing fat, you know, the drug, you kind of start plateauing and then you start losing the using the drug as a appetite suppressant, which is not really what it's supposed to do. These drugs work by turning on insulin so that you can actually burn fat. So in my practice, my patients actually have lost more weight than the Lilly study, okay? Because I'm following them carefully. You have to stay very well hydrated while you're on these medications, sometimes upwards of a gallon a day. It really depends on the individual. And we measure this with our scale. You need to get 100 grams of protein in. Sometimes in the beginning, people aren't hungry and they're not eating at all, and that's terrible. So they really need a lot of supervision. Mm -hmm. So if people are not taking the right dose, they're not being followed by a body comp scale, they're not going to have great results. Right. And I get so many referrals of patients coming in frustrated. Oh. They felt the drugs didn't work. They weren't getting anywhere. They were plateauing. They were getting hungry. They need to stay on a really high dose of medication and it wasn't working for them. And when we started following their body, composi body composition, mm -hmm. maybe checking out their hormonal status, is anything else going on? Then we really got to the bottom of it. And in my practice, if patients get down to an ideal body fat, and a woman that be, might be 20% and a man 15%, we can taper them off the medications and keep them off the medications for the most part. I was going to ask you, you about know, that because the study actually reveals that two major factors that are in play here into the differences in the numbers that we're seeing, patients frequently stopping taking the medications, mm -hmm. and then doctors also prescribing lower doses than were actually used in the research studies. Kind of break some of that down for us in terms of dosing, like you said, and the issue with people, um, I guess, self-prescribing and kind of taking over um, what how Good they're question. using yeah. these drugs. So a lot of people will go down on the dose themselves, a lot of patients, because they're not feeling well. They have nausea, vomiting, et cetera. Many times that happens because the patient is not drinking enough water or they're not eating enough protein. So that's number one. And then if a doctor or a physician is not a weight loss specialist, uh, he or she may not be prescribing the right dose. If someone is very insulin resistant, they come in with a very high body fat, they're probably going to have to go up on the doses. They can't stick with those very low doses. And the studies didn't even include those low doses. When Lily tested Monjaro, they only used the much higher doses because those are the fat-burning doses. Those are the doses that work. The lower doses are just to prime your body. Uh -huh. So I think patients should not be DIYers. 
A lot of patients are gonna need to take a higher dose and they'll stay on the drug if they're feeling well, if they're hydrated and they're getting enough protein. Ah, makes sense. All right, well, Dr. Sue Dakotis, thank you so much for that in-depth information. Overall, we need to see a medical weight loss professional if we wanna use these drugs. We appreciate your time, thank you.